Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Candid with R and D. And today I have with me someone flying in all the way from Kolkata to attend this podcast of Candid with R and D, Mr. Karan Bapuri. Karan, welcome to Candid with R and D. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you so much for having me over. Firstly, I'd like to share this with everyone. Uh, Raghu is the reason why I've been able to, you know, learn a lot. I've been able to do a lot of work because of Raghu, and I would be grateful to Raghu for that. So, coming to Delhi for this was nothing, and I think even through this podcast, just not the people who will be seeing it. It's also me who will learn a lot by 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 just interacting with the. Uh, so Karan and me, we go uh, way back. Uh, we were sharing, uh, not sharing, but like rather working uh, at an office together. Where he was an intern and I was a junior, and we sort of stayed in touch. And I visited Kolkata, met him, and then whenever he comes to Delhi, he makes a point to meet me. And that is sort of how we sort of uh, stayed in touch. Um, talking about Kolkata, Karan, like uh, how is the litigation practice seen in Kolkata? And uh, given the fact that Kolkata High Court is the oldest high court. Of our nation, um, how has the practice evolved over the centuries? Well, Raghu, I think uh, Calcutta the practice is very different from what we see in Delhi. Like the little time I've spent in Delhi, I've seen your practice. I've seen the pace. Fundamentally, the pace is what is different from Calcutta, which is a Delhi practice, where the practice in Calcutta is comparatively slower. The lower courts take their own good time to. Come for the case to get into shape. In high courts, also your matters, unless it's a bail or anticipatory bail matter, things take time to take form over there. Whereas in Delhi, and this is this is to Delhi's credit that you know work happens faster, people are able to get relief faster. So that way, I would say you know in Calcutta, people need to be more patient. When even as a lawyer you have to be more patient, even as a litigant for that matter, you know if you if you have a case being filed over there of yours, you need to be a little patient over there. Whereas in Delhi you can you know you can expect your redressal at a faster pace. And I hope in the, in the future we have these little changes which can ensure that work happens at a faster pace in Calcutta. So, uh, Karan primarily deals uh, with the uh, criminal, hardcore criminal uh, law practice. Um, how has the criminal sort of uh, uh, judicial system in Calcutta taken course uh, over the years? Raghu, my practice is fundamentally, as you said, criminal practice. I do a little bit. We do a little bit of writ and election matters as well, and especially in a politically sensitive. Place like Bengal, your criminal practice will have a lot of election matters also with with it. Coming back to criminal practice, I think after the Supreme Court's judgment of the very celebrated judgment of Satinder Antil, which is uh, the Satinder Antil Part Two, which came up into 2023, Volume One, SCC Criminal One, the first judgment of SCC Criminal. For that, uh, for the year 2023, I think that's been a uh, landmark judgment when it comes to criminal jurisprudence in, in not just Calcutta, West Bengal, it's pan India, mm-hmm. where uh, Supreme Court has requested or has directed the High Courts to ensure bail matters are disposed of quicker, under trials are not kept waiting for their matters to get over. Satinder Antal has made it very clear that you know your period of custody or period of incarceration can be a ground for you to get bail. So, for example, if you have a case against you and that case has been going on for for years and years and years, and the delay is not because of you, or but it has been because of external factors or factors which are beyond your control, Supreme Court has made it clear that you know bail has to be granted in those kind of cases. So that way, now you see a lot of bails being granted in not just in Calcutta High Court, but also across other uh, states. That in the NDPS matter, where bail was next to impossible, you never heard of bail being granted in matters where there was recovery, where it involved commercial quantity. It was next to impossible. Now, because of such an a person's liberty is being given its due. 
and it has made it clear once right under Article 21 shall supersede any other statutory law in force in the country. Yeah, I mean, uh, talking about uh, how uh, certain judgments sort of, you know, put out the uh, roadmap for all the courts to sort of abide and just follow it. Yeah. Um, having worked in different uh, states uh, across uh, India, um, uh, how do you sort of uh, place the different courts, um, their style of working, uh, the way they function uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, cases getting listed quicker or having that laid back approach. Um, talk us through the different, uh, you know, jurisdictions in India. I think in India, every part of the country has its own culture, their own way of working. There will be a certain part of the country where you see things happening at a lower pace. I wouldn't want to name the city or, you know, mm-hmm. put a bad name to the city. But, uh, but if you take Delhi's example, Delhi is a place where you have the pace being at a much better rate than compared to other cities. You have your listing being done quicker, matters are being heard faster, you, your, your disposal rates are also higher. So that is great. But on the other hand, if you think about it from the other view, a lot of these cities where workplace is higher, they, what they give importance to is disposal. Mm-hmm. So what comes to our mind as lawyers or even as a litigant, what you think about is that if a court has disposal in its mind, then how much is it willing to hear the advocate on merits? What if just for the sake of disposing of the matter, the merits of the case are over They are not willing to get into the depth of the matter. They just hear the matter at the surface and they are disposing it. So it's a double-edged sword at the end of the day. But culturally, I think pace of work is a big part of work culture. So what I've seen in other states, you know, which are a little bit backward compared to them, the pace is slower. But of course, then I've also come across states where more than monetary part, a lot of importance is given to academics. For example, in Calcutta, I would say Calcutta is slower when it comes to disposal or you know when the work pace compared to Delhi is it is of course but over there culturally what is given more importance is your academics. Lawyers are asked to study very hard. We've been asked to give academics prominence over your monetary needs. So that that is also different and what another thing I've seen culturally different over there when it comes to work. Over there we are asked to specialize with one particular area of law rather than dabbling with different areas of law. Mm-hmm. You, we are told that you know you should have one area of specialization which is also great, it also works. You know you have in-depth knowledge of your particular area of law. Yeah. So of course that is uh, financially it will hit you initially, but I think in the long run it's a, it will keep you going. Interesting, interesting. Uh, no, I think specialization is something that um, you know you you got to like pick at least uh, once you're a decade in the profession so that you can of you know, actually uh, see that once you're going ahead with that particular line and school of thought you can dictate those briefs accordingly. Otherwise, what happens is you sort of dabble too much into uh, uncharted territories Mm -hmm. and you end up just uh, losing your focus and then sort of collapsing. And I've seen that happen to a lot of lawyers, uh, young lawyers who are, you know, uh, trying to do as much as they can. Uh, On the the contrary, I I would say that, you know, especially for first generation lawyers, you can't really pick and uh, you know pick and choose uh, early on because if you're getting a certain uh, let's say a 138 or like a marriage registration, you got to say yes to it because you you have to uh, expose yourself <coughs> to those cases as well. Maybe later on you can sort of uh, you know take that conscious call of you know let's say 
okay this is something that i have worked on for a while now this is something i like doing so this is something i want to pursue myself uh, you know see myself doing for the donkey years that i am in this profession so um being a generational lawyer karan yes. um <laughs> do you feel uh, under pressure sometimes to deliver uh, compared to a first generation lawyer See, as a third generation lawyer, I think of course there's always that pressure that you know you have to live up to a certain standard. You have to, you know, you have to come out of the shadows of your predecessors. Having said that, it also gives you a lot of advantage, and I wouldn't deny. I think uh, in your initial days, getting introduced to the system becomes very easy for you, being a second generation or third generation lawyer. But as i said at the end of the day it's your merits which will keep you going first few years of being introduced is just for the asking and after that you have to work on yourself and you have to ensure that. Yeah, yeah. that you know whatever was provided to you you did capitalize on it you worked on it to ensure that you are able to sustain in the long run today if i am introduced to the system earlier but i'm not able to give the results if i'm not prepared with my briefs I don't think so. Anyone's going to come to me with the briefs. Absolutely, that that I think will always remain, no matter how prominent of like, no matter how like influential, influential or prominent or family that you mm. are part of. If you're not prepared as a lawyer, you will you can expect that okay, we will find your replacement. Yeah, and in high courts, I'm sure over here also you must have seen. you know children of uh, very big advocates who not been able to do well yeah who not been able to get the kind Absolutely. of briefs that probably their parents have were able to get or the kind of kind of mean their parents were able to make yeah it's and here on the other side you also see a lot of lawyers who are first generation lawyers who are actually running the show in different high courts today who yeah. had no connection whatsoever with any lawyer in their lives purely on merit purely on merit so yeah. this this speaks volumes about the profession as well that maybe in your initial days You might have a little hiccups if you're a first generation lawyer, but if you are seriously there in the profession, if you are willing to make those sacrifices, work hard, give every day of your life to the profession. There's no holiday. You can't have a chicken heart in this profession. You, if you're willing to work hard every single day, you will get your results. Absolutely. Maybe ten years from now, eight years from now, but all you have to do is hold on and be consistent and patient. absolutely, absolutely. See, that that's the key word. consistent patience right how do you generate business current like when you uh, have the sort of plethora of family connections that are at your disposal yeah. uh, do you sort of uh, bank on them at certain intervals or do you prefer to just go out and uh, make your own name uh, when it comes to generating business or is it a sort of mix of both being very honest with you raghu when it comes to business and law in this industry what i've seen You really, there is no formula. There is no straight like formula. You know, you do, you take step A, then you take a step B, then you C, then this gives you an X kind of revenue. It's not that. What I have seen is in this profession, all you have to do is whenever there is a brief, you just wholeheartedly work on that brief, ensure that your see results you cannot guarantee. It's totally up to the judge what the result of the, the of the case will be or the fate of the case will be. But if you show hundred percent honesty. and the right intent with your work there will be work coming your way just keep your head held low work hard keep that arrogance away be respectful to everyone you will get work in this profession that's i think a very good mantra karan and i would advise all my uh, viewers to actually uh, bank on this mantra in order to like have a uh, you know uh, steady career in this profession um moving on karan yeah. while engaging someone for a supreme court matter or an outstation matter you know for that matter yeah um what are the traits you look in that particular counsel before engaging him or her for that matter see if i'm engaging someone in supreme court and probably if i'm engaging someone in supreme court that must mean that i have worked on that case in the high court So what I generally see is, of course, merit goes without question. That you know, today if you go to Supreme Court, the client will be spending an X amount of money, which is which will be a big amount. So you need to ensure that the money is invested in the right place. You know, 
this person who you are give, going to brief is going to give 100% justice in terms of the kind of work which that will be done on that brief. So you look at the merits of that person. Secondly, what you see is your comfort with that person. You know, there are 10 people who, who will probably work well on your brief who are equally capable of, uh, you know, doing the work on that brief or giving you the results. But what you see secondly is the comfort because you all are working as a team over there. No, one's, no one is hunting alone in this profession. Absolutely. You hunt in a team in this profession. You cannot hunt alone. That's a big takeaway. I think for everyone that you yeah. cannot think about being the one who's going to get the brief, who's going to move the matter, who's going to look, uh, who's going to update the clients about the matter, who's going to look into the listing of the matter, integrities of the matter. A person alone cannot do it. All over the pack of it has. It has to be a team. So when you brief someone, you're thinking what you think about is a team. What you need is a good, a good synchronization between yeah. the team members. So you look at comfort. What I see generally, like today if I know, if I have anything in Delhi, I yeah. talk to Raku because yeah. I have that comfort with him. Yeah. I know that today I can discuss the matter with him to at my, you know, and bring before him certain questions which I wouldn't hesitate to ask. That is a big, big, big thing. Yeah. I can ask you questions which I wouldn't hesitate to ask because of the comfort I have with him. Because I was a certain other person who I'm not very uncomfortable with. I would think twice before, you know, if I have some query, you know, I would have inhibitions about asking that question. So comfort is a big point. And I think the same principles would apply while engaging a senior advocate as well when you are briefing him or her. Yeah. Yeah, you have to look at the comfort level, you have to look at, uh, you know, if that person uh, sort of uh, gives out that confidence uh, which sort of you know uh, can you which sort of makes you comfortable enough yeah. to sort of rely on that person yeah, yeah. Uh, that's 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 true that's true yeah, you cannot be brief yeah, yes, you can will hold yeah. bring you down to the point that you wouldn't want to even look at the brief the next day that is, that, <laughs> so, that is a big thing because in this profession you might have you might come across people who will try to you know bring you down yeah about yeah. the smallest of things so you, know, you need to be you need to protect yourself also at the same point yes that's true. and your client so you know today if, if I'm not being able to if I don't have the channel of communication with the senior mm -hmm. it's not just me who gets affected it's also the client who gets affected absolutely the case also which will also get affected and ultimately it's the interest of the client that lawyer has to take care of exactly, exactly. so if, if you're not doing justice to that then the whole concept of you know representation gets uh, nullified absolutely so that's that's very much there um coming to the uh, Question of uh, funny anecdotes yeah. from court. Um, anything on top of your mind that sort of strikes? See, I'll tell you very honestly. You know, there have been funny anecdotes, but as I told you, that you know, those, those have been very personal remarks which have been given. So I cannot put that on record right now. But um, to be very honest, when you enter your court premise, try to be as serious as possible. Or at least pretend yeah. to be that serious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, my 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 genuine advice to everyone would be that wipe off your smile, especially yeah. if you're a junior when you yeah. enter the court premise. That's smile true. as much as you want to outside the court. That's, that's true. No, I I personally yeah. uh, seen young lawyers. Um, now I don't know how many cases or how much workload they have. But they'll always be, you know, rushing from one court to the other, or whenever they're in the canteen, also they'll always make sure that they're always occupied or busy, or that's seriousness that they have. Yeah. I mean, that that is something which is inherent in our profession, I think. Absolutely. That the more you sort of show to the world how serious and how occupied and how busy you are, mm -hmm. the sort of more uh, you they say that your your, your reputation precedes you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, the word will then spread. Ki, this guy is always, you know, hustling and bustling and just running from uh, uh, port to port. So he must have a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And then with that, uh, you know, reputation uh, of that particular person, that sort of spreads. And then like that, it sort of uh, 
But yeah, you're right. You you can't be smoking and grinding, grinding yeah. and playing. Of course, you will have your light moments. Ha, that's true. That even is, even in court true. with judges, you will have those light moments. Yeah. When the judge will have yeah. those uh, light remarks yeah. and uh, those, uh, you will have that time. Yeah. But that's true. I mean, seriousness is. At least this is what we've been taught that you know you need to be very serious in the court for mics. You know, no matter who, what state of mind you are, your you need to be. Once you enter the court for mics. What what you think about is your mind. That's about it. Even if you don't have any work, instead of spending time in the canteen, what do you observe? You you go you hear the court. observe the matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Court yeah. hearing is very important. It you know it gets you acquainted with certain nitty gritties of court proceedings. Court you know, maybe maybe yeah. you might need it tomorrow in your own matter. Absolutely. So you should learn from someone else's matter as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last but not the least, Karan, young lawyers are uh, coming in this profession yeah. like a flock of sheep. Yeah. And or uh, quite often they're not they're not given that guidance that they look for uh, right. by uh, you know seniors, yeah. which is sort of a moral responsibility yeah. also, I believe. Yeah. Um, what would you uh, talk to them uh, about? See, what I would honestly tell all of them is that you. Just firstly, I'll tell them to be patient. Just hold on. There will be days you will feel terrible about it. There will be days that you feel like you know this is not for me. But on those days, you need to tell yourself that I need to hold on. This is this is a long race. This is not. This is a test match. This is not a T Twenty match, as one senior had told me. Calculate that. So you need to be patient. The days you don't have a study. Go through the laws. Go through judgments. If you're doing criminal practice, go through your SCC criminal or subscribe to journals. And just be polite to everyone. You will have stressful days. That does not mean that you know you take out the stress in you on people around you. Maybe to your junior colleagues or your clerks. Be humble. Be nice. Just have absolute faith in yourself and just take one day at a time. You will get your work. You will get your share of importance. You will get your share. You will get your share of monetary due also. Just, just be honest to the profession, to the people around you, and yeah. Well, you know now what to do and what not to do. So on that note, Karan, we'll uh, end this podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much for being there. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you, sir.